Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Becky. We are registered dietitians that are passionate about food as medicine. In today's video, we will be covering signs of estrogen dominance as well as food and supplement recommendations to balance out your estrogen. So let's first begin, Allie, with why we see so much estrogen dominance and what exactly it is in the first place. Yes. So actually we can see estrogen dominance correlating with obesity or excess body fat. Our fat cells or adipocytes themselves are estrogenic. So men or women that are holding excessive body fat will commonly have higher estrogen levels. Also, people that have recently lost weight, they're going to have more circulating estrogen levels as their body fat has been liberated. Now they have excess hormones circulating through their body, so they could be candidates as well. Another source of estrogen dominance is through our environment, through toxins that are endocrine disruptors or synthetic forms of estrogen, and those used in our agriculture or in our ranches when we're using hormones or growth hormone. And we can see estrogen dominance in the body in light of low progesterone or testosterone. So if a man or a woman isn't making the other healthy counterpart hormone, that estrogen, even if at a normal level, will express as dominant. So Allie, let's first discuss what some of the very common signs and symptoms of estrogen dominance are. Like, how do we know that our estrogen is off? Yes. So it is quite common, as you mentioned, Becky. We can see anything from mood swings, which can be expressed as irritability or anxiety. We can see hot flashes and night sweats. We can see insomnia. We can see increased belly fat and issues with metabolism or weight loss. We can see low libido as well as, again, imbalance with testosterone and progesterone. We can even see GI issues with bloating and bowel irregularity because there's that estrobolome, the interaction of the microbiome and that excess estrogen, and so much more, including even things like hair loss. And yes, another symptom to note would be PMS and irregular cycles. So seeing a heavier cycle, excessive clotting with our cycle, and even an irregular cycle rhythm. And infertility as well. Sure. Yes. yes. So we're going to talk to you guys about six solutions or ways that you can support healthy estrogen metabolism in your body, regulating that estrogen dominance through food as medicine and supplement support. Let's start with what we need to avoid or get out of the diet in the first place. So yeah, one of the first things to avoid are our exogenous estrogens or estrogen that's found outside of the body. This is going to come in the form of things like xenoestrogens in our plastic drinking containers, plastic Tupperware, plastic utensils, and if we're heating things in plastic, even worse. So definitely, definitely avoid those. Things like phytoestrogen, so seeing estrogen in the form of soy, as well as dairy, which is estrogenic, and especially conventional forms of dairy and animal protein, which are given exogenous hormone. Yes, that growth hormone that's used in dairy as well as animal production for meat can definitely drive that estrogen dominance. And not to mention the hormone you might be taking in the form of your birth control. Oral contraceptives can also contribute greatly to that estrogen dominance. Yeah, that's a really good point. And one of the populations I think we see estrogen dominance in the most frequently is those who've been on birth control for years. Yes. So when we're looking at metabolizing the estrogen level in our body, beyond avoiding that exogenous or excessive outside stimulus, we want to support the way that our body metabolizes the estrogen. So there's actually a process called aromatization. And in this process, aromatization converts testosterone into estrogen. This is where men can be at risk for gynomastia or male breast formation, as well as the big belly fat that we can see in andro pause or when men see declining testosterone and excessive estrogen. So we want to bring in zinc. Zinc is actually an aromatase inhibitor. So it's going to block that conversion pathway to allow a healthy testosterone expression while not converting that into the excess estrogen. Zinc food as medicine sources could be found in our red meat as one of the best sources available. So I have a delightful ribeye here. And then pumpkin seeds or pepitas are another great form of zinc. And then 
beyond supporting with zinc, supporting our detox pathways is super important for hormone expression in general because our liver is that first site of hormone production and also the first site of detoxification of excess hormone or hormone we don't need in our body. So using things like apple cider vinegar to really rev up that bile flow, um, bringing in things like broccoli and cruciferous veggies, which have been studied with the I3C or indol 3 carbonyl compounds to help to reduce that excess estrogen, especially in the breast cancer population. Yes, and we'll even see on a supplemental level combining an indol 3 carbonyl into DIM or diindol methionine, which can be used with clinical high levels of estrogen. But we like to first start as a supplement intervention with our Brocco Detox. Yes, we love Brocco Detox. This is actually a featured supplement in our women's hormone bundle. And rather than something like DIM, which wouldn't be safe to take unless you've tested with high levels of estrogen, Brocco Detox can be supportive across the board for all kinds of hormonal imbalance issues. So this is a fantastic whole food focused formula. It's going to have the sprout, the floret, and the broccoli seed extract. And this is going to provide a very potent dose of glucoraphanin and myrosinase, which work in the body to activate sulforaphane production. This is going to enhance protection of our DNA, anti-cancer properties, as well as antioxidant and detoxification properties in the body. Yes, while supporting that estrogen metabolism. So all good things there. The fourth area of focus is progesterone deficiency. So we wanna bring progesterone up to the playing field, if you will. Again, even if you have a healthy, normal, or optimal level of estrogen, but the progesterone is deficient, you're going to see expression of that estrogen dominance. So as far as a clinical tool, we like to use myo-inositol. This has been shown in research to aid in ovarian function and can help to balance out women's cycles, their menstrual cycles. We also see myo-inositol being a powerful tool with PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, where women are also expressing often excessive estrogen. Our Relax and Regulate features a potent dose of that myo-inositol along with magnesium bisglycinate, which regulates the fight or flight stress response. If we are under chronic stress, we're going to be turning our progesterone levels into that survival cortisol, which can further steal from that already potentially low hormone. We also on a food as medicine level would wanna consider citrus. So citrus is actually a great source of inositol as well, and it also provides us a unique bioflavonoid. This has been shown in studies to demonstrate a reduction of estrogen receptor function. So this means that there's less expression of estrogen in the levels when we're eating a healthy diet with citrus as a highlight. As we've said before, stress is not sexy and that can really wreak havoc on our hormonal balance. So using things like adaptogens such as maca, which we really talked about in our libido boosting foods video, which can enhance progesterone production and be supportive of thyroid health. And then on a supplemental level, our adaptogen boost is a fantastic stress supporting supplement that has three featured adaptogens. So we've got cordyceps mushroom, panax ginseng, and rhodiola. So rhodiola in particular, in a dose of 100 milligrams, has been seen in studies to actually regulate menstrual cycle and aid in fertility in women who are experiencing amenorrhea or loss of cycle. And the sixth thing that we want you to do to regulate your estrogen metabolism is poop daily. So Becky mentioned how your liver is really important as far as regulating excess estrogen, but we also see estrogen levels building up in individuals that have bowel irregularity, especially with constipation. So we look for markers in the functional medicine world. One of them is beta-gluconeridase. Beta-gluconeridase levels, when elevated, are giving us a sign that that individual is dealing with a buildup also of estrogen in their body, and that beta-gluconeridase is elevated based on microbiome imbalance, again, often seen with constipation. So getting ample fiber is one way to move and bind that excess circulating estrogen so that it doesn't get reabsorbed in that gut blood barrier, but actually gets excreted or carried out of the body. So some food as medicine focus here could be getting ample fiber with flax, 
and our phytofiber is a great supplement support which provides food as medicine solutions to fiber. So we're getting prune in here and cranberry as well as the flax seed. Now flax seed is worth highlighting because we've actually seen that flax can be categorized as a phytoestrogen, but unlike soy, we see very favorable impact of the flax and estrogen metabolism. In fact, we've seen in clinical studies, individuals that consume flax regularly, which can reduce risk factors for estrogen-related cancers. So if you feel like you may be experiencing some of these signs of estrogen dominance or hormone imbalance, our 10-day detox is a really good place to start to put together all of the tools that we've talked about today in kind of small, measurable ways over a 10-day protocol. Yes, so you can check out the link below to check out our interactive detox video class, as well as our detox ebook to learn more about our food as medicine approach to regulate all of the hormone in the body through supporting the detox process. And if you like today's video, make sure that you like and comment below with your favorite food as medicine tip, and make sure you subscribe to stay on top of our weekly releases of functional medicine information. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the signs and symptoms of estrogen dominance, as well as ways that you can, that as well as always gets I know, as well as, as ways. Well as yeah. ways.